part one, we illustrated five contradictions between the requirements of Big Bang and black hole equations. Here, Mr. Crothers will review some of those arguments in more detail. To summarize, the contradictions between the two mathematical proposals include that a black hole is spatially infinite, but this contradicts Big Bang when it is alleged to be finite. A black hole is described as an object, Big Bang as a process. Black holes don't expand, Big Bang does. A black hole consists of one mass, Big Bang consists of discrete stars and galaxies. A black hole is asymptotically flat at the boundary conditions, Big Bang is not. Let's just compare some of the characteristics of the black hole universe with the Big Bang universe. It doesn't matter uh, which one, because I'll refer to each one of these three options. Now, Big Bang, a uh, black hole universe rather, black hole universe, let's have a look at this. The black hole universe is spatially infinite by its construction, by mathematical construction of a definition. Let's have a look now at the corresponding one for the Big Bang universe. It's spatially finite, yes, in one case, or it's spatially infinite in two different cases. So which one of these would you choose to match up with the spatially infinite black hole universe? Certainly the finite model can't match, so that would be a contradiction. Infinite, if spatially infinite of zero curvature and spatially infinite of negative curvature, then we would get a correspondence. But we're not told which one we use, generally speaking. So we have three options here. Which one is it? Certainly that one will not match this one. Now, the black hole universe is eternal. That means it, there is, the time goes forward, backwards. It doesn't make any difference. It's meaningless. The universe is eternal. But the Big Bang universe is not eternal at all because no matter which model is utilised, whether it's positive, negative or zero curvature, it is of a finite age. Well, an eternal universe can't exist in a finite aged universe. So you can't put a black hole universe into that again. The other thing about the black hole universe is that it is not expanding. But all these alleged Big Bang models are expanding. Again, we cannot therefore put a black hole universe into a Big Bang universe or a Big Bang universe into any black hole universe. Furthermore, the black hole universe contains only one mass. But in the Big Bang universes, whether it's the, well, any one of these three, there are lots of radiation and masses obtained in the way that I explained here by violating the model, superposing uh, clumps of matter such as galaxies and stars and black holes even though the model begins as a perfect fluid. So that's a contradiction as well. It's not expanding as a speed in what, not one mass, lots of radiation and masses. Finally, black hole universe. Except for some very esoteric cases which we won't worry about because they're so far-fetched, even though these are far-fetched, they are asymptotically flat. But the Big Bang universe, any one of these options, is not asymptotically flat. So again, we have a contradiction. Could you explain that a little better? What do you mean by asymptotically flat? Good question. You can draw that. Good question, Bill. Let's say this is a star, and we're going to talk about the curvature here. Well, we can draw perhaps something like here. Let's say that that represents flat space time. And we'll draw a, a, an axis down here so that we get our bearings from this point. Uh, as you move away from the star, the curvature of space-time becomes less and less and less and less and becomes flat and flat asymptotically. So we it approach approaches the asymptote. Yes. On both sides, I would assume. Correct. So, in both sides, in our little two-dimensional two representation. But, of course, in Einstein's theory, this is supposed to be a four-dimensional asymptotic flatness. Well, we can't imagine that. We can't even, we can't draw it. So we have to resort to two a two-dimensional model. But the idea is easily conveyed in terms of asymptotes and asymptotic approaching. Now, this raises another very important issue. Let's consider a black hole. And this one here is, again, flat space time. 
we are told that the black hole is uh, has a singularity of infinite density at which the curvature of the universe is infinite. Mm. We'll represent that just simply by a, a very sharp uh, uh, curvature there and we'll say okay this one here goes down to a little point there and we'll, we'll think of that as being an infinite curvature. And the black hole is to be infinite, is to be asymptotically flat. We see that there cannot be any other masses present in this universe, let alone another black hole. Let's consider that argument of another black hole. Okay, this black hole must be the same in characteristics in terms of this one because this one must also have an infinite curvature at its singularity. Well, we'll do that. And it, it encounters the gravitational field of this one. And this one here comes up, and here we go. Now we look at this black hole, we'll call it black hole number one, and black hole number two. Well, we see between these black holes, and it doesn't matter how far or close they are, this is not asymptotically flat. It doesn't get that it gets, gets up to some point here, and then it curves down again. This is getting flatter, and then it gets more curved. Not only that, black hole number one encounters an infinite curvature at the point of black hole number two. And black hole number two also encounters an infinite curvature at black hole number one. Well, this means that neither of these black holes are in an asymptotically flat space-time. Why is Big Bang uh, not asymptotically flat? Why is it proposed as such? Uh, is it the only mass or what? No, uh, Big Bang does not utilize the concept of asymptotically flat in its definition. And so it arbitrarily puts in masses, including multiple black holes. Let's take, that, we take these two black holes, and I'll put that there as number one, and this one here as number two. And there's the line, so we between the two of them. We have this situation. How can you have the two black holes in the Big Bang universe when both of them actually encounter an infinite curvature here? Well, this one encounters an, this one encounters an infinite curvature there. That one encounters an infinite curvature there. And the other thing is, uh, 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 if we have a finite universe, well, we don't have asymptotic flatness anywhere. If we have a spatially infinite universe, as in these two cases, we can't have asymptotically flatness uh, either because there are lots and lots of galaxies and also every one of these galaxies encounters all the other galaxies and any black holes that are there, and so none of those things can be asymptotically flat. So asymptotic flatness is not part of this model. Uh, but you see that incorporating black holes into the Big Bang model violates the definition of the black hole, so it can't possibly be so. In other words, it's not possible to insert a black hole universe into a Big Bang universe, or a Big Bang universe into a black hole universe, owing to these contradictions, these five that I've listed here. And they put in all of these other black holes, by superposition, but superposition is not valid in general relativity. And why is that? Well, the simple reason is that general relativity is a non-linear theory. That means, let's take an example. X and Y are two different solutions to Einstein's field equations. And let's say that A and B are just simple scalars, right? Now, it's a non-linear theory. So if I make this linear combination, AX plus BY. This is a linear combination of two different solutions, such as a black hole universe, maybe that one, and a big bang universe, which is that one. But because it's a non-linear theory, theory, this linear combination is invalid. In other words, a linear combination of two separate solutions is not a solution to Einstein's field equations. This is a mathematical form of these two here contradictory definitions. Let us consider some of the argue, or a simple argument that is put forward for the formation of a black hole. Let's call all of these, for instance, stars. And we are told that under certain circumstances where some star, let's take this one here, it gets too big for its boots and so it collapses upon itself. And this collapse uh, becomes irresistible and this is crushed down to a singularity which uh, has zero dimensions. Now, we are told that it's under its own forces of gravity. Here's a problem to start with. Force is not 
But gravitation, rather, is not a force in general relativity. So one cannot invoke gravitational forces from Newton's theory to justify the idea of the body collapsing upon itself. There, is, there are no gravitational forces in general relativity because general relativity describes gravitation as a curvature of space-time. So there's no impetus to really draw this body down upon itself. All right, let's uh, give them the, uh, some leeway and say, uh, yes, okay, well, the star collapses upon itself. Notice this, straight away we have multiple stars, but we've already seen that we cannot have multiple bodies uh, in the one body universe, the one mass universe, because all of this stuff is obtained by superposition which doesn't hold. So they assume first a multiple mass universe. This is a Newtonian idea. It certainly has no basis in general relativity. So what is started off with is a Newtonian concept of having lots of stars because general relativity can't uh, start with lots of stars. There are no, no idea to formulate, there's no idea of, of how we can formulate this very uh, concept in general relativity. So now this star collapses into a black hole. It's supposed to be asymptotically flat. It's a one mass universe. Well, if that happens, this becomes a black hole. What happens to all of these other stars? They must mysteriously vanish from the whole universe without going down this, the, the black hole throat, and being swallowed up by it. They just completely disappear like magic. Why is that? Because the black hole is defined as being a one mass asymptotically flat universe. So these stars can't possibly be, be, be uh, present if this forms a black hole. Certainly, it can't be in a Newtonian universe with all the stars present because black holes do not occur in Newton's theory. The Michelle Laplace dark body is easily shown to have nothing to do with a black hole. It doesn't share the characteristics of a black hole, so it's not a black hole. And, and a black hole is alleged to come from general relativity. So Newton's universe cannot collapse into a non-Newtonian universe of a black hole and, Newton and retain the idea of Newtonian stars all around it. To summarize, Mr. Crothers has outlined the main contradictions inherent in Big Bang and black hole equations. It is up to the proponents of Big Bang and black hole to show how they are compatible in the alternative.